The Dallas Mavericks have gone down 0-2 to the Golden State Warriors, and they have looked like the far inferior team for six out of the eight quarters played so far. The Warriors were favored most in this series, and now the Mavericks see themselves going to Dallas with their backs against the wall with a must-win game three. So, my question for today's video is, do the Mavericks have hope, or is this series pretty much done with and they're screwed? Let's talk about it. Real quick before I get into this video, if you are new here and you haven't subscribed already and you end up enjoying this video, then please be sure to subscribe. Also drop a like on this video, it only takes one second and it makes a massive difference in how the video performs and the YouTube algorithm. Now, right out of the gate, I kind of have to screw myself here because I'm gonna break the golden rule of an NBA video like this. Uh, I'm gonna address the question of the title immediately and say that no, uh, the Mavericks aren't screwed. If at least by screwed you mean like they're definitely out of this one. As I'm sure you have heard many people say already, the Suns went up 2-0 on the Mavericks and looked like the far superior team. So it's very well within the realm of possibility to win a series with that kind of rough start. So with being screwed, meaning the series is over, no, the Dallas Mavericks are not not screwed, but they absolutely see themselves with an uphill battle, and it's not a slight incline. It's pretty fucking steep. Because, as much as people like to compare this to the Suns series, in that series, the Phoenix Suns did a lot of work for the Mavericks. Chris Paul forgetting he's a star player that's supposed to, you know, be aggressive on offense, and Devin Booker at least being aggressive, but his shot's not going in. That series was just as much a collapse from the Suns as it was a triumph from the Mavericks. That's not to take credit away from Dallas, but that collapse was a necessary part of the puzzle. And I wouldn't bank on that kind of collapse happening again with the Golden State Warriors. Maybe there's somewhat of a drop off, maybe there's a small collapse, but not like an all time no show game seven type of collapse. And to add insult to injury, I saw a stat, or I guess a, a number before uh, making this video, that said that 90% of teams that go up 2-0 in the Western Conference end up winning the series. Now, the three-point era has made leads both in games and in series not what they used to be. I imagine that percentage goes down with time. However, that is still a damning percentage that makes things look rather scary for Dallas. But we also just saw the Bucks go up 3-2 to the Celtics, and the team that wins game five wins 82% of the time, and obviously they didn't in that situation, so numbers are not necessarily everything. So what can be done? How does Dallas dig themselves out of this hole? Well, first things first, there needs to be some changes to this team's defensive scheme because they're really trying to play defense like they are playing the Phoenix Suns. The scheme they ran was obviously very effective against Phoenix's offense, but Phoenix's offensive system and the Warriors' offensive system are pretty damn different, so it's not a one-size-fits-all type of thing. The Suns are one of the most prolific pick-and-roll teams in basketball. The Warriors generate most of their offense from off-ball action, guys getting open from jumpers off of screens or cutting back door. Dallas has the defensive pieces capable of defending this type of offense, but it requires requires more patience and smart decision making. This Warriors offense is less predictable and requires you to be more tactile, and Dallas's defenders are running around like chickens with their heads cut off trying to blitz pick and rolls and allowing backdoor cuts as a result. That worked when you were playing against the Suns when they were running all those pick and rolls, and it put the pressure on the ball handler, but now all you're doing is creating holes in your defense and the Warriors are talented enough to exploit them. Now what I'm talking about was most prevalent in the fourth quarter of game two as the Mavericks gave up driving lane and backdoor cut after driving lane and backdoor cut and that was how they made the comeback and eventually dominated the fourth quarter. All of this happened as the defenders tried to recover from pretty avoidable mistakes. So the defense needs to calm down a little bit 
conduct itself a little less aggressively, and that should work out better in their favor. Now, offensively, the problem here is I don't think much can be done to combat their current problems with just simply adjusting the system. It's really more, you'd need different personnel. And you obviously can't make those changes until the off season, so you're kind of stuck here. Their biggest problem right now is that they really, really, really live and die by the three. Dallas's offense is quite simple. It's really just non-stop driving kicks, and with an on-ball creator like Luka fucking Doncic, even something so simple can be wildly effective. However, you can have bad shooting nights, and when those come, if you have little to fall back on, it's going to show. And that's exactly what happened in Game 1 and the second half of Game 2. The Mavericks went 11 for 48 from 3 in Game 1, and in Game 2, of the 21 three-pointers they made, 15 of them came in the first half and they went ice cold in the second. But the way the system is currently constructed, there's really no going back from that. Maybe they could try some more cutting action, some more pick and roll, but there's no drastic sweeping change that's going to be able to be made on such short notice. The only thing you could do is just ask a bunch of players to do way more than they're really capable of, and at that point, you just might as well stick with what mostly works. This is the whole heliocentric thing that I've complained about with the Mavericks for years and the Houston Rockets in the past. This style with the right superstar talent can go extremely far, but if it remains this bare bones, it will always fall short of going all the way. I've seen plenty of people like, I thought helocentric offense was bad, but look at how far the Mavericks are going. But no one really said they were like awful and that they had no positive results just that it had a cap and that cap was below championship level. And I'd hate to maybe say I told you so because I'm rooting for the Mavericks in this series, but it's looking like I might end up saying I told you so. I guess we'll see. So as for what Dallas actually can do for their offense, well, first of all, the Frank Nielakina and a Especially Josh Green minutes need to be thrown out the window. Frank, I get getting a couple of minutes because my God, that guy can play defense, but Josh is just running around out there. Now, he's a young guy and he has time to potentially turn into something, so I'm not gonna automatically knock the guy, but he isn't anything right now and he's just a liability every second he is on the floor and him being a part of this rotation is nothing short of unnecessary. Also, I understand the defensive liability that he can be, but I truly believe that Davis Bertans deserves more minutes just kind of in general. He has been an absolute sniper from outside in these playoffs and being how much they rely on these threes, more minutes from your best shooter definitely couldn't hurt. Also, this one might not be fixable on such short notice, but can someone tell Dorian Finney-Smith to stop passing up his three-pointers that aren't like perfectly open? The guy will have a 95% open look and because of that 5%, he pump fakes and takes two dribbles and passes it. You're a good shooter, dude. Take the fucking shot. The last thing I would suggest is more mismatch hunting, or I guess I should say more effective mismatch hunting. The Warriors are good at rotating and preventing leaving someone like Steph or Poole on an island, and in game one, they really went for the mismatches and Golden State answered, but at least you did make them work for it. Game two, they didn't mismatch Hunt barely at all, and Golden State's defense had an easier time. Obviously, the Mavericks had a better offensive game, but you didn't make their defense work for it. You're making their life a little too easy. My series preview video has obviously got delayed, and you can tell that by the fact that I'm talking about this series two games in. However, if I was going to, or if, if I had done this video on time, uh, what I would have said at the end was that my gut is screaming that Dallas wins this series, but every time I try to apply any kind of logic to my gut reaction, it's not there. So if I had to make a prediction, it would be the Warriors. And even now, down to 0-2, my gut still kind of leans with Dallas, but of course, if I'm gonna predict the rest of this series, I'm probably gonna say Warriors in six, maybe even five, but probably six. And yeah, I personally have been rooting for Dallas, so I'd love to be wrong about that. I would love to see Luka have a run as impressive as Osa, wait, script must be wrong, sorry a run more impressive than what LeBron did in 07. Would love to see him do something like that. 
but uh, unfortunately, I don't think that's gonna happen, and the Warriors probably have this one, but I would love to be wrong. Shout out to Rudy for editing this video, but that is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this, and cue the outro music.